from DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Theodore the Great, Conservative Crusader by Daniel Ruddy, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at MarlarHouse.com. Mark Wahlberg soared to the top of the world's highest-paid actors on an annual Forbes magazine poll. Wahlberg, 46, earned an estimated $68 million in 2017 thanks to his paydays for movies Daddy's Home 2 and Transformers The Last Night. Wow! Imagine what he might have made if he'd actually been able to land good movies. Tiffany Trump's recent Roman holiday included a stay on a friend's yacht and over $100,000 in car rental costs. Over $100,000 in car rentals? How does somebody do that when they're staying on a boat? When NASA launched Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 deep into space 40 years ago, each spacecraft brought along a golden record with sights and sounds from Earth, just in case any aliens were to stumble across it. Well, now that record is being recreated in a box set for humans on Earth. And after seeing the list of songs chosen for those records, it is completely understandable why aliens have decided not to visit us. A British study claims that cats prefer spending time with humans over eating food. On the flip side, humans would rather spend time with food than with cats. Or with other humans, for that matter. If you bought any avocados on Facebook, they're probably stolen. With local and global demand for avocados showing no sign of tapering off, there have been dozens of nighttime raids on orchards in New Zealand by thieves. But while last year most of the stolen crops ended up in roadside fruit stands and small shops, this year thieves have had to get more creative and they're taking their stolen wares to social media like Facebook. All right, so maybe I'm just out of the loop here, but who does grocery shopping on Facebook? Some white supremacists taking DNA tests have discovered they're part black. <laughs> that's that's got to be awkward at the Klan meetings. <laughs> just wait until it comes out that they're also Lionel Richie fans. A new study finds that human brains are hardwired to gossip. I, I didn't realize the National Enquirer conducted studies, did you? Snack company Kind dumped 45,485 pounds of sugar in Times Square on Tuesday to spark conversation about how much added sugar children consume. On the plus side, New York's rodent problem has just been solved by giving all of the rats diabetes. 95-year-old producer Norman Lear has been given the go-ahead to produce a new series for NBC called Guess Who Died? Well, at 95 years old, has anybody considered this might be his autobiography? Canada plans to legalize recreational marijuana in 2018. An official says Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberal government will introduce legislation this spring that is expected to become law by July of next year. At which point, everybody who said they'd leave the U.S. if Trump got elected now have another reason to make good on that promise. Customers and employees of Joe's Crab Shack were stunned last week to discover the restaurants closed with no warning. The company has closed 41 restaurants so far. Man, first it was Radio Shack, now it's Joe's Crab Shack. I'd be getting my resume updated if I work at the Shake Shack. A man in Germany was charged with theft and burglary after police said they found 93 pounds of women's panties, bras, and other underwear at his home. Investigators believe the man took as many as 1,500 undergarments from apartment complex laundry rooms before he was caught. Well, I, I guess everybody needs a hobby. The next version of Google's Android software will be called Oreo, followed shortly thereafter by someone saying it's racist because we live in 2017. UFO experts say that California is the state with the most UFO sightings. Now, with all the plastic surgery there, the aliens are probably confused, thinking California is their home planet. A former computer programmer who got rich by rigging state lottery systems has been sentenced to prison. He's assigned to cell numbers 4, 6, 12, 22, and red cell 81. The study finds that about a third of new parents lose the equivalent of two months of sleep during their baby's first year. And one in five parents said they lose more than three hours a night, almost three full nights a week. But even those of us without kids, we still lose that much sleep. 
usually from staying up late binge-watching Netflix. In Spain, Rocio Cortez Nunez delivered her third child by C-section at Seville's Valma Hospital. Shortly after the delivery, she was being wheeled from surgery to a recovery room and was in an elevator when sheer tragedy struck. Reportedly, while the doors opened and shut, the elevator didn't move. So the orderlies decided to try another elevator, but as they were moving Mrs. Nunez out and with the doors open, the elevator suddenly started going up. The exact details have not been confirmed, but reports from the BBC suggest that when the elevator started moving, part of her body was outside the elevator and part was in, and she was decapitated. Her newborn baby was not in the elevator with her during the accident, which a regional health minister describes as quick, unusual, and tragic. Her family's demanding somebody be punished over the death. Believe it or not, the elevator was reportedly serviced fewer than 10 days ago. Hold the phone. In-person contact is the only type of interaction that beats depression. Oregon Health and Science University researchers studied data on 11,000-plus adults ages 50 and over who'd been asked how often they communicated with family and friends through get-togethers, calls, letter, and emails. Those who saw loved ones in person at least three times a week, they had just a 6.5% chance of being diagnosed with clinical depression. But those who got in-person contact only every few months or less had an 11.5% chance. Which all seems kind of strange to me because isn't it typically dealing with your family that causes depression? They may get incredible free health care, not have to pay back student loans, and a pension for life. But even congressmen and congresswomen are held to the same standards as the rest of us when they break the law. Montana Representative Greg Gianforte had lost his bid to avoid being booked, photographed, and fingerprinted for assaulting a reporter the day before he was elected last May. Judge Rick West ordered Gianforte to report to the Gallatin County Detention Center to be booked for the assault charge by September 15th. Gianforte was never arrested and booked for the assault against Guardian reporter Ben Jacobs on May 24th. Prosecutors filed the assault charge later that day, and Gianforte pleaded guilty in June. However, his attorneys argued that he should not have to be photographed and fingerprinted because he was never actually arrested. But the judge shot that down. Of course, Gianforte wouldn't want anybody to have a mugshot to use against him, you know, when he runs for re-election next year. Being a nasty jerk at work pays off. A joint study at Cornell and Notre Dame universities seems to prove that the old saying, nice guys finish last, is true, especially in the workplace. The researchers found that men who were less agreeable earned 18% more, or an extra $10,000 annually, and similar types of women averaged 5% more, or nearly $2,000 per year. Nice guys are getting the shaft, declares Cornell professor Beth A. Livingston. The problem is many managers don't realize they reward disagreeableness. You know, I, I wanted to uh, show this to my boss in the hopes of him changing the way he treats me, but uh, I don't like confrontation. Police in Germany have seized a stash of Donald Trump-shaped ecstasy pills. During a recent random traffic stop, cops glanced inside a van and saw the 5,000 pills which were pressed into the shape of the president's head. All right, wait a minute here. Hey, this one looks like Fred Flintstone. Yeah, I think some of these might be kids' vitamins. Whether it's the result of a solid economy or simply generosity, the Tooth Fairy is slipping a lot of money under pillows in exchange for baby teeth. The nationwide average in 2016 was $4.66 per tooth, up 19% from the $3.91 she gave in 2015 and up a staggering 93% from the $2.42 she gave in 2012. That's the word from the annual Tooth Fairy Poll of 1,588 parents nationwide conducted by Delta Dental, which points to the busy fairies as a barometer of the stock market's overall direction. And I was born in the wrong decade. I only got a quarter from the Tooth Fairy for my lost molars. Ex-CIA operative Valerie Plame, whose cover was blown during the George W. Bush administration, she wants to buy Twitter. Why? just to get President Trump thrown off of it. And with that in mind, she has started a GoFundMe page to buy a controlling interest in Twitter in order to delete the president's account. The company's currently worth about $12 billion. And so far, she's got right around 53 bucks. 
In her new book detailing her failed 2016 presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton writes that while she kept her composure during their town hall debate when Donald Trump stalked her on stage and invaded her space, she was thinking that the then GOP candidate was a creep who made her skin crawl. Isn't it great to learn she's not a sore loser? A Catholic priest has taken a leave of absence after revealing his past as a member of the KKK. The Klan and the priesthood. Well, maybe he's not a white supremacist after all. Maybe he just really enjoys the feel of loose-flowing garments. A truck driver distracted by a GPS unit crashed in Arkansas and spilled a truckload of spaghetti sauce. Earlier this month in Arkansas, a tank car filled with bourbon crashed on an interstate. And also this month in Arkansas, a truck accident left frozen pizzas scattered about. So the lesson here is clear. Hang out on Arkansas highways if you want to save money on your grocery bill. If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. If you'd like to become an official weirdo, simply click that subscribe button and the notification bell. And while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you're a weirdo.